Amen. First, giving honor to God, who's the head of our life, to this bereaving family, to all the ministers and dignitaries that have showed themselves present here on today. We are here to celebrate the life and the legacy of a true patriot, a true visionary. And if I can stand on record by saying I'm a better person, because uh, God graced me with the opportunity to know Mr. James Abbott Johnson. So let's just salute him. Can we give him a hand of praise for all the work? Amen. We're here to celebrate. Amen. Amen. Can't too many people say that they have accomplished what this great man did. Can't too many people say that they have loved the way this man have loved. As a matter of fact, I'm in his last days, I had the opportunity to go and cut his hair in his house. And his main talk was his church and his family. And he, that brought him great joy just to know that he cared about White Oak. So one thing that I want to say is that we had a man here that was a role model. And if we just can remember how he walked, our steps would be a little better. Amen? Amen. Amen. We have a program that has been printed and carefully put together by the family. And we are asked that we adhere to what the family wishes are. So we will follow the program as the program is printed. And the first person we will have raised the pool pit will be none other than Reverend Perez Watson with a selection. And after that selection, we will have a prayer by Reverend Philip Wells come in that order. First, giving honor to God, who is the head of my life, to the pastor of this church, to all the other pastors, ministers, and all of you in your respective place, and to this family, my family. I just want to say I love you, and I thank God for you. And you keep your head up, knowing y'all did the best you could for your father. And his last memories is his children by his side. And I just want to tell you, not only did he recognize that, but God saw it also. And I want to say, job well done to you all. Deacon Fry, as I called him, he called me Pastor P. Um, one of my fun memories is him trying to lead a song for devotion for the first time. And so I think it's befitting for us to raise one of uh, these good deacon songs. Amen. Well down through the years uh, the Lord's been good to me. Well down through the years. Y'all can hear me.
God been good to us. We didn't come here perfect doing everything right. But God, in his wisdom, didn't know everything about us. And still, he loved us so. Been mighty good to me. I know he's been good to you. Lord, we thank you for these that came out to support Brother James and family, Lord. You've been good to them also. Pray, oh God, that you would just bless them. Give us all the courage we need to do your will. Father, we realize that the time is winding up, and what we must do, we must do it quickly. Things will happen on the left and on the right. Things will happen right before our eyes, and we see things today that we've never seen a witness in our lives. But God, you're still good. And no matter what it looks like, you're still a wonderful Savior. We're still in love with you because you first loved us. We thank you, God, that you said I would never leave you, nor forsake you. And I know sometimes we all feel like God has lifted his presence. But we got his word that attests to the fact that he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will always meet you, be with you, even unto the end of the world. And for that promise, we can have faith. We can have confidence, courage to know that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he need to repent. If God said it, that settled it. He said in the beginning, let there be light in the universe lit up. He called a dead man from a tomb, and in that four days, Lazarus come forth. It happened just like God said. And God, we thank you because we can trust your word. We can trust every aspect of you because you're a good God. And you love us so much. You demonstrated your love for us. The Bible said even when we were yet sinners, you died for us. You died for Brother James Apple Johnson. You died for the people on the sound of my voice. You died. But thank God you didn't stay dead. That's not the end of the matter. The Bible said he got up. Resurrection got up. Power in his hand. Said all power is given unto me. Told the disciples that go you into all the world. Preach the gospel. Tell men and women everywhere. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So glad I heard that message. So glad Brother James heard that message. So glad I acted upon that message. So glad Brother James acted upon that message. God, we thank you for everything. Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts, let it, oh God, be acceptable in your sight. That's all we want to do is to please you, God. We want to be a living epistle written and read of all men. We want to be an example to the world to know that God transformed our lives in a positive way. Father, we give your name your praise, the honor, and the glory. Thank you, dear God, for all that you've given us. You've blessed us. Giving us everything we need of pertaining to life and godliness. Been good in this family. Watched over them years and years and years. And our four parents, you watched over them and you brought us to this year. We are so grateful. And we want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. It's all in the masterless, marvelous, mighty name, glorious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord this evening. To God be the glory. Amen. It's an honor to stand before you. I was asked to do this, and I don't take it lightly. Love you, Timmy. Love the family. I had an honor to get to know James Abbott on a more personal level. I pastored him for a short season. And a few months ago, I went to see James. 
And this particular day that I went to see him, he was there by himself. And I believe the Lord set it up so it could be me and him. And for about an hour, we just sat there and we talked about our God. Because he always loved the word. Amen. And everywhere I meet James, where we I meet, sometimes I see him at quality foods. We stand right there at that stove and we talk about the word. Sometimes I would see him at Publix. We talk about the word. Because he knows I'm about to worry. Doesn't make no difference where I'm at. But for that time that I was with him, one of them encouraged to tell me, your daddy ain't in that box. Amen. So if you can fix your mind on heaven. Because that's where he is. Yeah. He's in heaven with Jesus. So if you can raise your thoughts to say, he's, he's in heaven. He's with his Lord, his master, his savior. Give you a few words of scripture here. In Psalms 116, you'll find these words. Read from the NIV translation of the Bible. It says, I love the Lord. For he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unweary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. You just heard Brother Wales. God is a good God. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted in the Lord. When I said, I am greatly afflicted. In my alarm, I said, everyone is a liar. What shall remain of the Lord for all of his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of his people. Listen to this verse right here. This is where I want to get to. Verse 15. It says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Notice God said it was precious in his sight. Come on, somebody. And I know we all go missing, but just for a little while. But see, God looks at it this way. He said, it's precious in my sight. So if it's all right with the Bible, It's all right with me. I'll see you in a little while. God bless you. Well, the song says, How excellent is thy name, Lord God. How excellent is thy name. Listen, I just want to take time out right now. This is, this is not a funeral, but this is a home going. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for my brother. James Alvin Johnson. Truly, he was truly a blessing to this church. Glory to God. Amen. And I thank God for him. I thank God for his life. I thank God for everyone he has touched in his life. Truly, he's been a blessing to me. Amen? Amen. I'm here to read the scriptures. The scripture today, a New Testament scripture, is coming from John, the 11th chapter. And I'm going to start off with the 20th verse. And it reads as thus. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, while Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha then said to Jesus, Master, if you had been here, my brother would have, would have not died. And even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, he will grant it to you. Jesus said to her, your brother shall rise again. My God, glory to God. Martha replied, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. See, Martha was looking for an event to happen, a place to happen. But Jesus said, 
Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, although he may die, yet shall he live. And whoever continues to live and believe in me shall never die at all. My God. Now my question to you all, do you believe this? Amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 I want to thank Reverend Perez Watson for that heartfelt song. Uh, I want to also thank uh, Reverend Philip Wells for that soul-stirring prayer, and Reverend Willie Williams and Reverend Capers for those scriptures. Amen. Amen. Um, I, I remember, y'all, uh, my first encounter with uh, Deacon Allen. I had just joined this church and, and just started preaching, preaching about 15, 16 years ago. And um, I thought I was doing good. I, 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 thought, I, I thought I was doing good. And, and um, I got to the close and I, and I started tuning my voice up and, and I tried to, to be somebody I wasn't. Deacon now gracefully took me to the back and said, Quincy, the message was good. But that thing you did at the end, that wasn't you. <laughs> and that's what I, I admired about him. He told you the truth. Whether you liked it or not, but when you went back home and thought about it, you're like, man, he really was helping me, amen? amen? So I just thank him for all the time we shared, all the wisdom he gave me, and I'm a smarter, brighter, person because I sat at his feet yeah. for the times that I did. Amen. And at this time we're going to have a poem by Christian Jalen and Carly. Hear ye them. My journey's just begun. Don't think of me as gone away. My journey's just begun. Life holds so many facets. This earth is but one. Just think of me as resting. From the sorrows and the tears in a place of warmth and comfort where there are no days and years. Think of how I must be wishing that you could know today. How nothing but your sadness can really go away. And think of me as living in the hearts of those I touch, for nothing love is ever lost, and I know I was loved so much. Uncle Albert was a great man. He truly was. He was family-oriented, and he enjoyed helping others. He loved spending time with the youth, and we loved spending time with him, whether it was him taking us to Fort Yargo to ride the paddle boats, which ended up with us being in the water, not knowing how to swim while he took a nap on the bench, or to letting us come over to his house to dance to Michael Jackson on his Xbox. We always had fun times when we were with him. Uncle Albert has taught me several lessons, but one lesson he's taught me that he may not even realize he was teaching me was to never give up. No matter how much pain he was in, nor how bad he was feeling, there was one thing Uncle Albert was not going to do and that was to get in that wheelchair. It didn't matter if it took him 10 minutes to walk from the living room to the bathroom, he was gonna do it. He fought hard and he never gave up. Like the nurses said, that's a strong old man. <laughs> I'm going to miss Uncle Albert, but I'm glad he's no longer in pain. I know his love for God was strong, so he's praising God above. He may not be here on earth, but we'll meet again in heaven. I loved Uncle Albert so much. He was always there when I needed him, when I needed a ride, a help with something, anything in general, he would always come through. Everyone has their flaws, but Uncle Albert was a very caring person. He would always have cookouts at his house where everyone would come and spend time with each other, and of course eat, because y'all know he could cook, and just have a good time. He also did things for the community, like share the blessing and giving to people. 
Overall, he was a wonderful person and an amazing uncle. Rest in paradise, Uncle Albert. Thank you for all the wonderful memories and moments and always being there. I love you and you will forever be missed. Acts chapter 20, verse 35 says, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And if you knew anything about Albert, you know he was always giving to others. I remember when I was participating in the 50-state pageant, Albert helped me raise money by selling his world-famous barbecue. So obviously I won that pageant. Everybody wanted to buy a plate. He, and he never once complained about how much work it would be or how much he would have to do. He did it out of the kindness of his heart. Yeah. He did it out of the kindness of his own heart because that was the type of person that Albert was. And yes, we're all going to miss him, but let's be happy about the life he lived of serving others. He's now in a better place and his love will remain forever. Thank you. Amen. Awesome job, young ladies. Amen. Now it's time for the remarks. Um, the family have asked to keep the remarks to two minutes. Amen. Amen. And we will have Tammy Kenny, Sandra Campbell, Perry Kane, Tawana Johnson, Martha Slayton, Mike Strickland, Carol Lumpkin, and Kobe Kilgore. You will come in that order. Amen. I don't guess I'll get another pocketbook. <laughs> I can tell everybody in the church about our pocketbook babies. And I would really hate to ride with my uncle and I would call my mother and I would say, Mom, you wanna ride with Albert today? Uh-uh, ain't riding. I ain't gonna be a dog there long. <laughs> but in order for me to get the pocketbook that I want, I would always blame it on Dorothy Johnson, and I had to bring in Mother Janelle. <laughs> and I would hold up the pocketbook, and I would say, Albert, I believe Miss Doc Johnson would like this pocketbook, because they like them booming colors. <laughs> and he'll say, yeah. And on the way back, I'll be scared to say something because I might not get the pocketbook. <laughs> but I got the pocketbook. <laughs> we would play cards up to Miss Bootsy. I know they ain't playing cards up there in heaven. <laughs> and ever telling Miss Bootsy, you done cheated. <laughs> and if I agreed with Miss Bootsy, she had a good hand, he would jump up from the table and look at me and say, who side you on? <laughs> And they would call me, we frying fish. We got some hot dogs, we know you love to eat. <laughs> and I would get on up there and I'll say, who my partner? He'll say, sit down. <laughs> but my uncle was really good to me in spite of our arguments. He was always good to Romeo and Sante and Travis. In spite of everything and all the rise and all the fussing, he was really good to me and the boys. But I can say this last thing, he ain't gonna be running nothing up in heaven. <laughs> God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. 
Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And that's what Abba did. We've had several mayors in the city of Pine Town, as y'all know. <laughs> Paul Hall being our first, Abba being our second. And he did one time. <laughs> Abba loved the community of Pine Town. He could help you do good. He'd cut your grass, help you with home repairs. But just don't ask him to come kill a snake. That wouldn't happen. <laughs> we, all know love, we, know, we all know his love for us, share the blessing. He got my mom and I involved in that. We used to get up on Christmas morning around 4.30, phones start ringing. Y'all up? Agnes, y'all up? We'd be up and ready to go. We enjoyed those times. Now, unlike most of you women, and then some of you may so be into football, but we truly love the Falcons in Pine Town. <laughs> Alvin and I was gonna discuss on Saturday night what we were gonna cook. We got our meal together. We were gonna be the commentator, the coach, and the player. <laughs> we was gonna decide and criticize. And at the end of the game, we're gonna run out, we high five on the points, we run back in, and at the end of the game, we're gonna talk about who didn't do what. <laughs> and how could I leave out the barbecue? Most of us know him for his good barbecue and good food. But if you lived in Pine Town, if you started to barbecue, you come outside after going inside, doing a task of making your potato salad or whatever, you might come outside and your grill smoke is coming from another area because the barbecue seat has come and stole the grill. <laughs> we loved him, he loved us, and forever he will be a citizen of Pine Town. So Everett, I don't know about the cars, Tammy, but there's smoke going on in heaven. <laughs> something I got to say about Abba. It's not a really lot of stuff to say about, but the thing that I do say about him, he was my partner, and we were down. And most of the time, you didn't have to ask Abba with you, with you, he was already ready. So that's the way Abba was. Abba was the type of guy that uh, whatever he did or whatever he would tend to do, he was, he was just that type of guy. So that's the way I feel about Abba, you know, and uh, I was the type of guy, he didn't bring none, he didn't start none, but you know what he would do. <laughs> but, and the things about it, I would have to say, I'll just bear with it. These shoes, these shoes for Albert here. And I know when you seen him, you didn't have to turn the light on, because Albert thrown the light. So this is the way Albert was. So Alvin was the type of guy, he let his light shine. Yeah. Would, he wouldn't have to say it, y'all would know it.
20 years ago, this December 25th. Mm. Think about that. Yeah. 20 years ago. And we have been recognized by the state of Georgia for the work. Give God a hand clap of praise. So who would have thought 20 years ago that Spirit of Sharon, which started as a church potluck, would be the organizer, mobilizer, Tiffany, of one of the largest community events here in Barra County with more than 200 plus volunteers serving more than seven to 800 participants on the most coveted holiday, that's Christmas Day. Who would have thought 20 years ago that Spirit of Sharon would play a vital role here in this Barra County, city of Wanda, Tammy, playing a vital role by providing programs right over there in Glenwood. We provide an older adapt, adapt, ooh, older adult active exercise program. Yeah. We provide dance, which entails a ballet, jazz, tap, hip hop for the youth. We have a youth action team that focuses on youth empowerment, Diane, and preventive self-destruction behaviors. Who would have thought 20 years ago? Who would have thought that Spirit of Sharon would be a collaborative effort of other nonprofits, churches, and organizations coming together to do monthly food distributions, Howard, and that during this COVID pandemic environment that we've served more than 3,000 meals to our seniors and our youth. Who would have thought? Who would have thought 20 years ago? And you know, Alvin used to tell me this. He said, Warren, when God gives you a blank check, now don't you get ahead of him and write the amount in. Reverend Wells, he said, you let God write the amount in. Because you just might, Jabara, write the check too small. <laughs> Who would have thought 20 years ago that Spirit of Sharon would still be here? Yeah. And I would be remiss if I didn't talk about my dear friend. Because Alva Johnson, was more than a friend to me, Quincy. He was like a daddy. He was my spiritual teacher. And some days I was a good student. <laughs> because you know Albert, as uh, Candace already said, he's gonna run things. <laughs> so when I wasn't a good student, he reminded me that he was still the boss. <laughs> Right, Tammy? Before there was an Albert's barbecue, and I wish Calvin was here, Albert had a shoe shine business, Reverend Williams. He said before he was the age of 12, he and his brother Woogie would go shine shoes uptown because he was the boss. And so when I think about all of the good times we had with Albert, mm -hmm. we would enjoy laughing, and he had a wise crack for you. If he wasn't slick at the mouth, then something was wrong, <laughs> right? And he would tell you the truth. That's the truth man. And so we enjoy, you know, the zoo crew is what he called us. We were the Melrose Street Choir, right, uh, Chandel? We would get together and we would sing songs like, come on in the room, <laughs> right? We would talk about, down through the years, how God had been good to him, Sheila. He would even do a remix every now and then, Quincy, and talk about, I want to sit down by the banks of Jordan. And then he would always say, I'm not worried about my soul mm -hmm. because I fixed it with Jesus a long time ago. And so every time that we had a chance to reflect, he would always end with these words, God has shown up been good to me, Myra. Amen. And the reason he said that, because he knew that he hadn't always been on God's side. Right. But God saw fit to bring him over to his side. So we thank God for that. Amen. So on the morning of June 18th, because he had already told me, he said, Juan, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. And I said, Albert, are you at peace? He said, I'm at peace. I said, okay then. And so we prayed together. And then just like usual, I started taking my orders. I said, so what you want me to do now? <laughs> he said, call my family. Get my family on the phone. He said, I want to talk to my sisters and my brother. And we did. So on the morning of June 18th, with my mind's eye, I can just imagine what was going on. Albert had invited the Lord. He said, come on 
into my room because I fought a good fight. I ran the race, TJ. I have finished the course and I've done it with faith. And he said, Lord, I'm ready to sit down by the banks of Jordan. I can just imagine with my mind's eye. And so family, be encouraged. Be encouraged because we got a legacy here, Lisa. We got a legacy to stand on. So if nothing else, we need to trust and love God. Love each other. Love each other. Serve this community. And if we do that, then I know, like Alba, we too can say that <clears throat> everything is going to be all right. Yeah. Yeah. Love you, Alba. and I were very good friends for a very long time. He was in my office on occasion and we would tend to his business and we would talk about all kinds of stuff. I always thought we were, I always thought we were about the same age. And I just learned that James Albert was somewhat older than I was. <laughs> he was a youthful gentleman. And a gentleman he was, especially when there were ladies around. <laughs> James, James Albert was a strong supporter of our city and our county, and always giving himself, giving of himself, his energy and his talents. James Albert, James Albert's long-standing commitment and brotherly love made ours a much better community. Something about James Albert, something else about James Albert that I did not know until recently. James Albert served his country with distinction as a soldier in the United States Army. 
He was an airborne paratrooper assigned to the 82nd Airborne Division, the Screaming Eagle. And he spent a deployment tour in South Korea during the Korean War. Mm -hmm. And we all know a very, very awful war. Mm -hmm. And one that has been forgotten. But James Albert was there, and for that I am forever appreciative to him. Amen. And I will and have honored him for that reason alone, if for no other. I don't know how many parachute jumps James Albert made. <laughs> and I don't know how many of those may have been in combat. But he was airborne all the way. James Albert spent his lifetime setting a good example which, as we the living know, is a very powerful thing. Amen. Of James Albert, we can truly say, James Albert, you've run the good race. Yes. You've done a great job. Now be thou at peace, will you? Yes. You've crossed that great river, yes. and we all now say thank you, James Albert, yes. for all that you've done for us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> to the family, I've known Albert for over 38 years. His personal nurse, Sean, when he kept trying to fire the nurses they, that they had sent out from the VA. One would say, his daughter left his medicine out, and she told me to give it to him, but he won't take it. So I get there, go back there and get the medicine, give it to him with that ruby red juice, and he would take it with no problem. Tawana would tease him and say, I think Albert a little bit afraid of parents. <laughs> and Sister Diane, I think you're right, because he gave me a promotion. <laughs> he elevated me from nurse to doctor. <laughs> <laughs> when we would go to the appointments at the VA, I felt like we were Hoppy and Smitty <laughs> from Sanford and Son. <laughs> For those of you who know about Sanford and Son, the VA went, they would ask Albert a question. He would sit there, if he didn't say beg your pardon, he would look over there at me. And that meant for me to translate <laughs> what they were asking him. As a nurse, it is hard to see people that you care about sick. But what I learned from Albert during his sickness is to never lose hope, yeah. to keep the faith. Yeah. Don't become bitter with each other or God. People need to see the God in us, in our suffering. Mm. Our visit to the VA in September was disappointing because we didn't get the news that we had hoped for. I didn't know what our ride home was gonna be like. I left Albert at the front, I ran up the hill, got the truck, come back round, he got in and said, you remember how to get to Piccadilly from here? <laughs> I said, we still going to Piccadilly? So we had talked about it on the way up, but I didn't know. He said, yeah, we going to get our liver and onion. <laughs> we did, we got our liver and onion. On the way home, we talked about everything except for the doctor visit. You see, Albert, was lifting my spirit instead of me lifting his. As we pulled up at Melrose, he said, Dr. Lump, everything is gonna be all right. And so I say to the family, everything is all right. Albert is now with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you.
warned them at the house that it, it was going to be rough <laughs> today. Um, some of you don't know, uh, Chris learned today that I also go with Kenny. Uh, what Chris didn't learn today was I went with Albert too. <laughs> so let's put it out there so if y'all don't know, I do. Okay. I know y'all read on that at Vera. <laughs> <laughs> Bible says that works without faith without works is dead. Yeah. 
from the testimonies that we have just heard, we realize and understand that Mr. Deacon James Albert faith was relevant because he truly put in the work. Amen. 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 And at this moment, we will have a silent reading of the obituary. And after that, I'll come back up and we will um, continue with the program. Amen. Amen. Now at this time, we will have a selection by Lethia Swan, and immediately after the selection, we will have the eulogy by none other than Deacon Kenny Lumpkin. Amen.
soon as I get home. Praise the Lord. To the family, to our friends, to the church, to this distinguished group of ministers. Don't they look good up here? Yeah. Amen. Amen. It is indeed an honor to speak on behalf of our beloved brother, a hometown hero, Brother James Albert Johnson. I come on behalf of the one that said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Tammy, Shandell. Now I don't I don't have to tell y'all this, but it bears repeating. In the words of the great explorers that said, I've never done this before. In fact, Tawana, I had to look up the word eulogy just to see exactly what it meant. So I went to Webster and it says to praise highly. To praise highly. Chris, I thought about that and I said, you know what? I think I can do that. I think I can praise Brother James highly if you help me for a few minutes. Let's praise the father, the brother, the granddaddy, the father-in-law, the uncle. Y'all going to help me? The deacon, our brother, the culinary king, the trusted advisor for the next 35 minutes. I'm just kidding with you. For the next 18 minutes, we're going to praise the name of James Albert Johnson. Now, everybody said some beautiful things, Reverend Bennett, about Brother Albert. And that's what I called him, was Albert. He was so many things to so many people. There's just not enough room to say everything you want to say about him. It's, it's kind of like the Apostle John in the very last book, very last chapter of his book in the last verse. He said, Jesus did many things well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. So it's a big challenge to narrow down what you want to say about Brother Albert, to contemplate exactly the words to say about a really, really good man. My mind kept going back and forth, Brother Howard, to come up with what to say. I would get a thought on this side, and then it would come over here, and then I would replace it with a better thought, and then try to come back and pick up where I left off, I got like Albert was sometimes when he was looking for his keys, his, his wallet, or his cell phone. I just kind of got, I got a little bit confused. But what I did know was that Albert would want me to say something that was godly. He would want me to use his name, certainly in a way that would give glory to God, but he would want me to lift up the God of the word. Because the Albert to lift his name up without talking about our father would be kind of sacrilegious to Brother Albert. He loved the Lord. And he loved the word. Now, Reverend Bennett, he went crazy about that hoop you mentioned earlier. He, he went down with the, with the holler. And oftentimes he would say, our people have been yelled at long enough. Just give them the word. You know, you read the program, you, you, you see all of the things that Albert loved doing. But I would say at the top of that list would be his love for studying and discussing God's Word. Amen. Amen. He was a student of the Word, par excellence. Uh, he studied the Word. He never went to college. He didn't go to seminary. Uh, he wouldn't even hang out at the Northwestern Baptist Association. He, he wasn't down with that. But you would find him at Bible study, at Sunday school, 
Sister Three, I believe the greatest joy he had in our church was when he was teaching Bible study mm -hmm. in Sunday school. He had a true zeal for God's word. And you would be hard pressed to find somebody that could exegete the word. That, that's one of them big words, Pastor Hayes. But Alba could do it with the best of them. You know, the book of Acts talks about Paul, who was a scholarly man. And Paul studied at the feet of Gamaliel, who was a, who was a Jewish rabbi. Now, Alba wasn't Jewish, but he studied at the feet of a wisely man known as Claude Gray. C.H. Deacon Gray. Spirit-filled. Bible-toting man. And Albert learned everything he could from C.H. And I believe Albert spent many of his years pouring back into us people like Reverend Bennett and Tawana and anybody else that would take the time to sit at his feet. I've had the chance to have a number of conversations with Albert about the Word of God. We were ordained together on August the 13th, 1995. I called him my line brother. It was he, Brother Benny Taylor, and myself. We all got ordained together 25 years ago. So we spent a lot of time talking, talking church. And I remember asking him once, who, Albert in the Bible, is your, is your favorite character? Who do you align with personality-wise in the Bible? And I kind of had an idea who he was going to say. But I, I wanted to hear him say it. And then he said, I think I'm more like Peter. Peter. Peter, as you know, was a part of the inner circle. He was one of the 12 apostles. Of course, the big three of the inner circle would be Peter, James, and John, the sons of, of Zebedee. Peter was the, the leader of the pack. Uh, and while Peter was not one of the four major gospel writers, the book of Mark, Mark was a companion of Peter. Many scholars note that Mark's writing reflects Peter's close walk with Jesus. Peter was the one that you may recall that denied Christ three times before the cock crowed. All four gospel writers recorded that, by the way. Peter was also the one that cut off the ear of the servant of the chief priest that came to arrest Jesus on trumped up charges. Can you say trumped up charges? Yeah, yeah. Peter was full of energy. He was passionate. But, oh yeah, there, there's always a but, Pastor Hazel. He was known to kind of say things that he shouldn't and do things that he shouldn't. And otherwise, Pastor Hazel used to say, Peter would cuss you and cut you. Okay, so you see where I'm going with this now, don't you? <laughs> Those of you that knew our brother James knew he took delight in being the leader of the pack. He was chairman of the board of deacons, chairman of the trustees, Sunday school superintendent, building committee, the kitchen committee. Uh, he, he, was, he, was, he was the biggest of the big three. Uh, he was the inner circle. Albert was definitely large and in charge. And he was passionate about what he believed. In fact, if you ever disagree with him, he would let you know. Now, Brother Perry, I, I don't know of any stories where Albert pulled out his knife and cut off anyone's ear. But I can tell y'all a few church stories about how he pulled out a stick and chased a few brothers along with pulling out his pistol, Chris, from under his seat to let you know that he meant business. This was at the church. So, yes, Brother Alvin did have a little Peter in it. But, you know, when I think of Peter, I had a Peter moment not too long ago. It happened just a few days ago. I know some of you are wondering, why is he giving the eulogy? 
who chose him to give praise to Abba? It's a fair question. And he deserves the answer. It's because I'm his son. And that's what he said, and that's what I believe. Just like he's a lot of people's uncle, he's a lot of people's dad. Now, if you want to know exactly how I got here, you're going to have to go back to the kitchen. My mama's cooking cornbread. Talk to her about all the details. But Alba said it, and that settles it. Amen? Amen. I know there are others that are much more worthy of this honor. Much more worthy. But as for me, why I was chosen, I can't explain it. But what I can tell you is this. Much like Peter, I denied him three times. Now let me explain. July 2016, at the funeral of Cleveland Johnson Jr., Albert and I had a conversation. And he said to me, can you do that? And I said, do what? Can you do that? That what, what Gary did. Now, Gary Johnson, my good friend, used to play basketball with Chris and I, classmate. Gary did the eulogy for Cleveland Jr. Y'all remember that? And Albert said, could you do the eulogy? I said, well, Albert, I don't know. I've never done that. And I guess it would really depend on who I was doing it for. There was a pause. He said, could you do mine? Could you do my eulogy? Well, there was an even longer pause for me. I said, Albert, I don't know if I could do that. Those were my exact words. I never gave him a reason, and he never asked why. But it was clear that I had denied him. Fast forward. Almost four years to the day. Albert's called home to be with the Lord. Tammy and I are having a conversation in the back room. She says to me, Kenny, I've been praying about this, and I would like for you to do the eulogy. I paused. I, I was stunned. I didn't know what to say, because I knew I hadn't said anything to anybody about what Albert asked me to do, and I was pretty sure he hadn't said anything to anybody. So I deflected. I tried to wiggle out. Tammy even asked me to go home and pray about it. You remember that, Sister Tammy? She said, go home and pray about it. And I did. And I came back the next day. And I denied. That was twice. Two days later, we're sitting in the living room. We're working out the order of service, the obituary. We're putting things together. We penciled in everything, even the eulogist. And then I hear this soft voice, soft voice from the, from the side of the room. It wasn't Albert, but it said something that Albert would say, and it said, so Kenny, are you going to do it? I think you can do it. And it was coming from Shondale. Now, I can't tell you how I felt to hear those words come out of Shundell's mouth and to look over at him and, he, and him looking just like Albert. <laughs> I felt kind of like Jonah trying to, Reverend Bennett, run from what God had asked him to do when he said, I need you to go to Nineveh, but Jonah decided he wanted to run to Tarshish. I was trying to run from what I needed to do. But despite that burning, that feeling, that I had inside to do the right thing. I mustered up just enough cowardice to deny a third time. I could relate at that moment to just how Peter felt after he heard the cock crow. He realized what he had done, how he had denied the Christ yes, sir. three times. Yes, sir. There was a sinking feeling in my soul. Something that you can't define. I had denied my brother, my friend, my mentor. And much like Peter, I felt, I felt in my heart that I had denied the one that I loved. But my heart wouldn't let me let it go. All right. 
And much like Peter, I wanted and I needed redemption. And you know the story, John records it in his gospel, the restoration of Peter in the 21st chapter after Jesus had reappeared to his disciples after the resurrection. He told Peter, if you love me, do what? Feed my sheep. Peter would go on not only to redeem himself, but to become the rock that Jesus knew he would be. Peter would pe preach what is known as the first Christian sermon at Pentecost, where over 3,000 souls were saved that day. See, the message is clear, and it's simple for you and I today. God is a God of a second chance. You know, regardless of what we've done, if we can just open up our hearts, he will come in and remove all the stains. You know what the songwriter says, there's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Sinners, now that's you and I, plunge beneath the flood, lose all their what? Guilty stains. Brother Albert knew all of the redemptive power of the blood of Jesus. He used to say sometimes, we may fall out of the will of God, but we don't ever fall out of his reach. Amen. See, if you deny Jesus, made excuses as to why you can't do what he's called you to do, then maybe it's time to seek redemption. Maybe it's time to start feeding God. She, oftentimes we say, uh, we, we trust in God, Reverend Benny. But the question today, can God trust in us? Can he trust in us to be the feet and the hands to reach the community during a pandemic? Can we trust, can he trust in us to stand boldly and say what thus says the Lord? Can God trust in us to feed his sheep? That's what Brother Albert would want to know today. Can God trust in us to do the things that he used to do? That's what Brother Albert would want us to ask ourselves today. Albert spent a lifetime literally feeding people. He fixed food for just about everybody in here, I believe, and most of the folks in Barrett County. You never had to ask him to prepare food for a service like this for the bereaved family. He was already doing it anyway. That's because he would always say, don't sit around and say, is there something I can do? Let me know. Albert would always jump in and do it. He said, of course there's something to do. Do it. And while fixing food for others was his forte, his greatest joy came when he was able to see people led to Christ through his act of love and kindness. Albert used his culinary gifts he used his gift of fixing food to reach others. You see, what we saw as Albert fixing food, Albert saw it a little differently. Uh, Albert was interested in the impression that his food left in our hearts. We thought the secret to his barbecue sauce was in the ingredients that he put in the bottle, but it was actually the stuff that poured out of his heart. Albert was always serving up something good to eat without us ever really knowing what he had on the menu, you know, as the main course. Much like Albert, God is calling us today to step up and feed his sheep. Maybe not with food like Albert used to do. That was, that was his gift and talent, right? But what about your gift and talent? What can you do to feed God's sheep? That's what Albert would want you to do. And if you love Albert, that's what he would want you to do is show your love by feeding God's sheep. So as I close, I'm reminded of one of Albert's favorite quotes. He sometimes would, would get it confused. And he would say, what is that thing you say about people? I say, you mean uh, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care? He would say, yeah, that's it. 
Albert wanted us to never forget that the importance of putting people first is the most important thing we can do in all that we do. While it's okay to matriculate and go high and get a higher education, to get a better understanding, to, to get things in life, he would want us to never forget the very last thing that Jesus did to his disciples in the upper room during the last supper when Jesus himself, God himself, washed the feet of the disciples where Jesus became a lowly servant and went down on his knees to wash the feet of his disciples so that they could see the act of being a servant demonstrated of caring for one another. John 13, verses 34 and 35, in the New English translation, we record these words of Jesus saying, I give you a new commandment to love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. Everyone will know by this that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. We want to carry on the legacy of Brother James Albert Johnson and honor him with praise. My brothers and sisters, it's really simple. We just need to love one another. To the family, thank you so much. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Tammy, for giving me the honor to speak on behalf of a man that I love so much. He was a great man. He fought a good fight. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Albert, for all that you did for this church, this community, for everyone in this room. We will never forget all the good that you've done to make this world a better place. Amen. 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 Turn it over to the hands of Wimberley's funeral home. Amen. Good afternoon, pulpit associates. Thank you, family and friends. The family of the late Deacon James Albert Johnson wishes to acknowledge the many expressions of sympathy gesture of kindness shown during the passing of our beloved Uncle Albert, that's what I call him. We offer our heartfelt thanks to many friends on your prayers, words of comfort, your flowers, as well as those who made and will make a charitable donation to Spirit of Sharing. A special word of thanks to the health and care team for caring for Uncle Albert during his illness. As it would be impossible, impossible, to thank everyone individually, please accept this acknowledgement as an expression of our deepest gratitude. We also thank Wembley and Jackson for their genuine care and guidance during this time. As Kenny stated, when he thought of Albert, he thought of Peter, and I did too. So I wanted to read 1 Peter 5.10. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who have called you to his, to his glory in Christ, will restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Uncle Albert, the family would truly miss you. We love you. 
and rest in peace. Thank you. Let every heart say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. amen one more time. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. The acknowledgments have already been given by the family, but on behalf of Wimberly Funeral Home, we would like to present you, first of all, with this memorial blanket in loving memory of Mr. James Albert Johnson. We make sure we put that falcon sign on that too. Also, we would like to present you with two memorial pictures at this time. I, um, I, was, I was asked to give words of comfort and I told the family just put me on the back end with the acknowledgements. And it is so much I can say and I'm not even going to go into the times that me and Deacon Johnson shared. I've been he been knowing me all of my life, um, making me play this organ over here um, when I was at the age of seven years old. But there's so many memories that I have with uh, Deacon Johnson. I knew how to make them mad, <laughs> and I knew how to calm them down. Yeah, I knew how to push the right button for him. And he would always get on me about being late. So I'd say, now you gotta be on time when you come to church. Family and Friends Day was here. I said, James, I'm, 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 I'm gonna be there. He said, it's 11 o'clock, it's, it's a morning service. You need to be here. And he kept calling my phone, calling my phone. Of course, I was late. He rode me to a revival last August in Athens, Georgia. Revival started at 7 o'clock. I didn't pick James up till 7 o'clock. <laughs> and then I didn't have no gas in the car. <laughs> and he looked back at, Deacon Slate was with us, he looked back at Henry and he said, Henry, I'm gonna tell you something now. He always late now. He, if you're gonna be late like this, you ain't gonna have my body because you're gonna have me late for my funeral. <laughs> Conversations on the way to revival in August in Athens, he asked me to talk about Job. He said, Have you ever wondered about Job? And I said, One powerful text, and, and Brother Kenny just got through talking about it in Job, is when Job said, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And trust is different from faith. Yeah, faith is when you say, I know God can heal, I know God can make a way. But trust says, even if he don't do it the way I want him to do it, he's still God. And we talked about that. I'm, 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 I'm going to say this in closing. I thank God for the life of Deacon James Albert Johnson. And I believe that he has witnessed John 14 when it says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. That word mentions me in my father's house are many rooms. And so for prepared people, he has a room for them. A room for you, a room for me. Those who are in relationship with him, there's a, a room that's prepared for us. As I thought about that, I think about myself and my son. When I was growing up, I played hard. And I played so hard that wherever I fell asleep at, that's where I fell asleep. Whether it was in the living room or in the den, but I would fall asleep there, but in the morning when I wake up, I would wake up in my room. My son the same way, he plays so hard that wherever he falls asleep, that's where he falls asleep, whether it's in the den, in the kitchen, in the chair, but when he wake up in the morning, he in his room. And the reason why I made it to my room and my son make it to his room is because while we sleep, our fathers pick us up and carry us.
to our room. My dad used to pick me up and carry me to my room. I picked my son up and take him to his room. James Alba played hard. Right. And last Thursday, he fell asleep in his room. But in the morning, he woke up in the room that's prepared just for him. I'm going to say this, though. James Alba like church, and we're going to have a little church on the way out of here. Because I, 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 I know how he want to have it, all right? And uh, as when James Abbott transitioned on last Thursday, and as I went to remove his body, not him, but his body, remove his body from the house, as we was coming out, I believe it was Tawan and Kenny, they broke out with a little song. A little song they were singing, one of James Abbott's favorite songs, that says, I got a feeling that everything gonna be all right. Now we know everything is all right, but he would love to sing that song. I got a feeling everything gonna be all right. Will y'all help me have a little church and let's send them out the way he wanna go out? I got a feeling that everything's gonna be all right. Oh, come on, let's do it for James.
One more time. I don't. I'm gonna get and don't believe he wrote to this car. Put your hands together, give God praise. I'm going to ask that everyone please stand except for the immediate.